City. The Open Heavens Daily Devotion is written by Dad in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adeboe. And today is the 19th day of July. Our topic today is Abide in Christ. Let's say a word of prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray, O God, that you speak to our hearts, O God, in the name of Jesus. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your love for Christ. Amen. So this morning our topic is Abide in Christ. Our memory verse is taken from the book of John chapter 15 verse 4 reads Abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me I'll take that again abide in me and I in you as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me and our text is taken from the book of john chapter 15 verse 4 to 8 it reads abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except ye abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me i am the vine ye are the branches we know that jesus christ is talking here he that abided in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye cannot do anything. Verse 6 If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. Verse 8, the last verse. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. So this morning, Jesus Christ is calling upon us to abide in Him, to stay with Him. He is the, he is the vine, and we are the branches. Of course, the branch cannot even produce any form of fruit without connecting to the vine. So, so it's expedient, it's very important for us to abide in Christ. So your life should not be here in Christianity, in salvation, and you're still looking and enjoying the things of the world. No, we should abide. When we, when we, when we talk about abiding, we mean let the whole of your being, your, your spirit, soul, and body be in Christ. Don't look back. The Bible says whoever puts his hand on the plow and look at back is not fit. So this morning, Jesus Christ is urging us to abide in Him. To abide in Christ means to be born again, to be connected to Christ. You cannot bear fruit. We know that the, the, the fruit comes from the branch. So you cannot even get any form of fruit without connecting to Jesus Christ. You cannot do anything except you are connected to Christ. So this morning, Jesus Christ is saying, My son, my daughter, it is time for you to abide in me. If you've left Him, the Bible says that if the branch lieth on its own, that men will gather it and turn it into wood for fire. Some countries they call it firewood, you know. So you'll be born and you'll be useless like a chaff. So, but if you're connected, that's the only time you will bear fruit. So this morning, God is calling upon us this morning to search our hearts for you to be fruitful. The Bible says, Go here into the world, be fruitful. That is one commandment God has given to man. Be fruitful. God did not give animals that commandment. But he gave man, say, be fruitful. Have dominion. So for you to have dominion, for you to be fruitful, you must, it is expedient for you to connect to Christ. So this morning, our dad is telling us that the meaning of the name Emmanuel is not real to many so-called children, to many so-called children of God because they are not abiding in Christ. Therefore, they are caught in many horrible things in the course of their daily activities. So it's very important that when you wake up in the morning, you connect, you commit your day into God's hand, into the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ, because He is the one that knows the ending from the beginning. He's the one that knows what's going to happen to you. He's the all-knowing God, the omniscient God, the omniscient God. So it is very important when you wake up, you connect your day, your children, your life, 
you pray and connect everything that concerns your activities into his hand so that that day will be fruitful for you but if you wake up and you just go about your day without committing your day into the hands of god it's got a lot of things might know that you might blessings might elude you the blessings for that they might elude you so it's very important for you for you to connect today to get god's hand your career your finances your job your academy whatever thing it is your children your life into god's hands for you to be fruitful what is our part in this bargain our dad is telling asking us we must abide in him living holy because he is holy he should never take we should never take a break from living holy it is very important for all children of god who want to enjoy the presence of emmanuel to abide in him so that he would in turn abide in us the presence of Emmanuel, the, the meaning of Emmanuel is God with us. So if you know that God is with you, if you're professing it, you have to live it. It's not enough to profess it, but you have to invite Jesus. You know, once we our Lord Jesus Christ, once we God is, they don't barge into our affairs. They wait for us to invite them. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. God can budge into our life, but because He has given us our own will, that is why He stands at the door and knock. He is requesting. It's not like He's the one that created us, but it's not like He cannot enter into our life and take charge of our life. No, He wants us to ask. That's why He said in Matthew 7, 7, He said, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. It's not like He doesn't know what we need, but He wants us to ask because He has given us that will, the, the will to choose. So this morning, God is telling us to acknowledge the presence of God in everything that concerns us. No wonder the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. When we talk about trusting in God with all of our heart, it means trusting in God in with 100%, with every fiber of our being, with every cell of our being, for you to be prosperous, for you to be, to be fruitful, for you to have dominion. You must be connected. You must abide in Christ. You must acknowledge the power of God. May the Lord help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So how can we abide in God? The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Number one, fear God. And number two, keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of God. So what are the two ways to abide in Christ in God is to what? Number one, fear God. Not fear like literal being scared. No. To fear God in this context means to reverence Him. What does it mean to reverence somebody? To acknowledge that person. To know that that person is your source. To know that that person is is over you, is overall over you. Like you cannot do anything without Him. So that's the simple meaning of fearing God. To know that ha, it's all about you. I cannot do without you. You are my creator. You are my source. You are my everything. When you, so when you make God understand that fact about your life, then he's going to come and take charge over your life. The second is to keep his commandment. It is very possible to keep God's commandments. Remember, the, 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 the most important commandment is to love. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, that is when you'll be able to keep the whole command, the ten commandment. If you love your neighbor, that is when you will not be able to cheat your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you will not kill your neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you will not, you will not do things that does not glorify God. That is why love is the paramount, is the, is the, is the, the Bible says love is greater. No wonder the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, said, even though you speak in other tongues and you don't hold love, you are like a, a noisy symbol. You're making noise. So God will help us to walk and keep his commandments. That's how we will abide in him. Then we must fear God and keep his commandments. But our dad said us that many people today are taking the grace of God for granted, teaching that we can live in sin and grace would still abound. That's an error. So long as grace is abounding, it's not the it's not it's not it's not the criteria for us to continue to live in sin. This morning God is calling us to abide in him, to let go of little foxes that spoil the vine. The Bible says that Jesus told Peter, he said, 
that I have the devil has decided to see you like wheat, but I pray for you that your faith fail not. This morning, Jesus Christ is urging us, he's speaking to our heart this morning to abide in him. In that aspect, how can we benefit if we abide in Christ? What are the benefits of abiding in Christ? Number one, multiple blessings. The book of John chapter 15, verse 7 to 8 says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatever thing you will and shall be done unto you herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall be my disciples so our dad, our dad is telling us this morning that one of the benefits of abiding in christ is multiple blessings john said that whatever thing you ask in his name so long as you're doing his will so long as you're abiding in him just ask in his name it shall be done god will help us in jesus name amen another question is what if we fail to abide in christ what are the consequences and that is said god forbid because it carries terrible consequences jesus christ our lord said in john chapter 15 verse 6 if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men will gather him and cast him into the fire and they are born so you you becoming an object of caricature in the hands of the devil so if you don't abide in christ you become an object of caricature in the hands of the devil if you don't abide in christ you become a prey the devil will start messing up with your life the devil will be in entering and going out of your life like causing sicknesses diseases lack a lot a lot of things innumerable, innumerable things that the devil can do in your life because you are not abiding in Christ. So what which one are you choosing? Are you going to choose to abide in Christ or you're going to choose not to abide in Christ? So the devil to make a mess of your life. Take your decision this morning. So that is telling us that abiding in Christ is the ticket to peace and prosperity on earth and as well eternal and as well as eternity with God. Therefore, let us abide in him because he is willing to grant us everlasting life so another benefit of abiding in christ is peace is prosperity and eternal life may god help us in jesus name amen and that is pray for us he said father please help me to abide in you in the mighty name of jesus let's make that a prayer father we pray over that you help us to abide in you is there anything in our lives that is making us not to abide in you we call upon you this morning to take it off our lives oh god and we connect our spirit soul and body to you in the mighty name of jesus thank you for watching and we hope to see you tomorrow have a good